Honestly, I'm disappointed in what I thought or who I thought Drake was. Now, if y'all are unfamiliar with what's going on, bro, let me fill y'all in pause. Now, Drake has a long history of reference tracks. We heard like the first reference tracks way back in the day with Meek Mill, with uh, Quentin Miller. That whole album, if you're reading this too late, he dodged that bullet. It did not hurt him when them tracks came out. We heard Quentin Miller saying bar for bar, everything that Drake said, flow, everything. We was like, oh, nah, man, he just did it because of that one time, right? But more recent, after the Kendrick Lamar beef, which I'm going to go on record to say that Kendrick and Drake are not done beefing. Musically, the beef is over. But them two are still playing the beef wars. Why do you why do I say that? I say that because a track, a reference track for Drake's, I would say, classic song from the Scorpion album called Mob Ties. Has some help. Get rid of these. Yeah, that song. Right? That song leaked, a reference track from, by a guy named Vori. Now, I'm not a big fan of Vori. I heard about Vori. If y'all are unfamiliar with Vori, Vori, a few months ago, maybe like a month or two ago, Vori went viral because of this whole domestic violence thing that he was doing with his girl. The video looked crazy. So I start piecing things in my head. I'm like, all right. Vori was ghostwriting for Drake. Because obviously we hear the exact same flow, the exact same bars from the mob ties. Vori does something in the public eye that is awful. Like nobody want to, we not, no, we not in the era of tolerating no type of DV, none of that, bro. So bro low key got canceled. Meek Mill, which was his man, went out the window and said, yo, we done with Vori. So I'm thinking Drake kind of put Vori to the side too. Because why would Vori want to ruin his relationship with Drake and putting out that reference track? Only reason I could come up with is Vori is mad at Drake because Drake basically stepped away from him when he needed him. Now, Kendrick Lamar got to play a role into this, bro. I, I'm sorry. Like, the boogeyman is back, and he is not done with Drake. Kendrick Lamar has to be behind this whole leaking these reference tracks. Bro, I heard another one leaked. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just stay on Mob Ties for a second. Now, the debate for many years has been saying, yeah, it's okay if he get a hook. It's okay as long as it's not one of the classics. Well, now we're here. Mob Ties is a classic. I don't care what nobody say. That song was one of the best songs on the Scorpion album. So, when we hear a rapper that a lot of people are not familiar with, rapping bar for bar, flow, everything that Drake said is very questionable from the guy that we thought was the best rapper to ever do it. Now, that theory has been slowly being debunked by Kendrick Lamar because the beef is still going on. Like I'm saying, like Kendrick is still eating away at Drake's flesh. But let's stay on the reference track because I think there's a lot there. Drake once said that he is no longer able to rap the way that he once rapped. Now, how did Drake used to rap? Drake used to go bar for a Bar. Yo, Drake used to go crazy like, money just changed everything. I wonder how life without it would go. Yo, them, that Drake right there, he said that Drake is gone. So that made me think once again, because I'm going to use my brain in every scenario about this whole situation because I am really into it. Who was ghostwriting those bars for Drake? Because obviously he's telling us, yo, I can't do that no more. But why would a rapper say he can't rap like that no more? The guy with the Ghost Riders can't do something no more? That means one person that was really, really instrumental in helping Drake with those type of bars is 
obsolete. They're gone. They're not in the picture no more, bro. Somebody left Drake. And that's why Drake has been going on this run of... He went low, bro. Drake went so low that he got little Yachty to write for him, bro. You know how rock bottom you gotta be to let little Yachty write for you? Yeah, Yachty wrote The City Girl. But no, bro. I never want to hear Drake rap a little Yachty verse. But I'm gonna get off of Yachty because I'll be killing him. But, Drake... This is not good for you. I know a lot of people saying they don't care that Drake is getting help. A lot of people saying that this doesn't mean anything. This actually means everything because I'm questioning what actually did you write? Do you have an opinion in your brain that you have expressed on a beat? Or are you just a robot? If y'all remember the end of Paid in Full, bro, y'all remember when, uh, when bro was looking at the music video set? And it was like, he realized, like, the game, everything was fake. That's how I feel right now. I feel like Drake has been cosplaying as a rapper for all of these years. And now, the truth is finally coming out, bro. I don't know what Drake has written. And a lot of people saying, yeah, Drake, yo, we know he can do it. We don't know what Drake really can do, bro. We, we're not there in the studio. Why y'all acting like y'all know? Y'all don't know nothing. I remember Drake going on Funk Flex. On Funk Flex, like this. Drizzy Drake, what? Hot 9-7? I'm so far gone. We let Drake do that, bro. We let Drake get away with reading lyrics that we don't know where they came from. Think about that. Where did those lyrics come from? Somebody probably wrote them at this point, man. I don't know, man. What do you guys think about this situation? How do you guys feel about rappers and reference tracks, one? And how do you guys feel about Drake being the biggest rapper getting help from a lot of songs that we deem as great and classic? I want to know you guys' opinion, man. Please drop a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you made it this far in the video, bro. It's your boy, Busy, and I'm gone.